To access your global game settings, you can click on the resource drop-down from the main menus and select Change Global Game Settings, which is shift Control g Or, you can click on the icon for it, right here, or you can even click on Global Game Settings in your resource tree. Once you do, a new window will open. As I said in my Preferences lesson, I won't go into detail about certain export modules, as I don't have them all, and I just want to focus on Windows for now. However, I will have a playlist specific to other export modules in the future. The first tab is called General, and the first section is called Game Settings. Inside it you'll find Game Identifier. This is a unique number that GameMaker generates for the project you're working with. Next to it is Game GUID. There's a button called Generate New GUID and ID, and if you click it, you'll get a new game identifier and a new game GUID. These are simply unique identifiers for your project. One benefit is you can directly access the game ID by using game underscore ID in your code. You can use this read-only variable to generate things like unique file names or even use it for basic encryption. Most of the time though, you don't even need to access these two identifiers. Just below that you'll find a checkbox for Use New Audio Engine. A while back, YoYo Games added a new audio engine to GameMaker. However, if you're importing legacy projects for anything from GameMaker 8.1 or before, you may have to uncheck this box so that your audio code works properly. You may also need to uncheck this box if you're releasing to HTML5 because some web browsers don't support the new audio engine. I'll go into that further in an HTML5 lesson. On the right side we have Color Outside the Room Region. This is the color that will be drawn by default if the outside of your room is ever shown. You can click on the color box and choose a new color to be drawn outside the room. Below the game settings panel there's just one checkbox that says Short Circuit Evaluations. When you're writing code and you write something like a conditional statement and it contains things like AND, you want to check more than one thing. You check thing 1 and thing 2 and thing 3. Short circuit evaluation will terminate the code the moment it finds something in your condition that is not met. For instance, if you wanted to check if I'm pressing mouse left and I'm pressing keyboard space bar but you're not pressing down the mouse button, short circuit evaluation will read the first condition and check, is it met? And if it's not met, it doesn't bother reading the rest of the condition because it knows the entire condition won't be met. If you don't have short circuit evaluations checked, GameMaker will check every single condition in your conditional statement, even if one of them returns true or false or whatever the unintended result is. So I suggest keeping this checked, because it will make GameMaker a little faster when it runs your code. The next tab is Texture Groups. When you make a game, all of your graphics, which includes the font for the most part, will be put onto a texture page. Then when your game is running, it'll reference each texture page trying to find the graphics it was looking for to generate that particular uh, room or level. Now of course you can let GameMaker just generate the texture groups on its own, but if you're making a large game with a lot of graphics, it's probably best for you to control the texture groups yourself. For instance, let's say that your main menus for your game are very different from all of the levels to your game. You may then put all of the sprites associated with the main menu into a texture group called Main Menu. To do that, you would come down to one of these buttons, like Add, and click on it. Now I've added a new texture page. From here I can select it and click on Rename and call it Main Menu. After you've created a texture group for Main Menu, you can go to your Sprites folder in your resource tree, or even your Backgrounds folder in your resource tree, double click on one of your sprites, and find the section called Texture Settings. Here you'll find a Tile Horizontal box, a Tile Vertical box, and a Used for 3D box. We won't worry about that one as we're not looking at 3D right now. But here's where you can select your texture group. There's a drop-down menu, and inside should be any of the texture groups you've created in your global game settings. 
So if this particular sprite or background were specific to my main menu, I can put them in that texture group. Once I've done that, I can come back into the global game settings and go to the texture groups tab and click on the texture group I just added the sprites to. The images will appear on the right side in the texture group contents, and I can click on one of them and get an image preview on the right. And from here, I have a few options. One of them is texture group not scaled. If I click on this, GameMaker is not allowed to scale this texture group under any circumstances. This could be useful if you're releasing your game to different platforms like iOS and Windows and HTML5. Sometimes, because of all the different screen resolutions, GameMaker will need to scale your texture group. But that might look bad, especially for things like fonts, which become bitmapped and they are images. So you could create a texture page specifically for your fonts and then select texture group not scaled and GameMaker is not allowed to scale that group. The next box below is no cropping. Whenever you create a sprite or image for GameMaker and you have any sort of alpha or transparency around your actual pixels, when GameMaker adds that image to the texture page, it will crop out any of that dead space, any of the alpha channel or transparency to fit more images on a texture page. However, you may have intended the transparencies for that particular image. And if so, you can select no cropping. GameMaker will then leave the transparency around your sprite to leave it at the canvas size you originally intended. For instance, if your sprite's canvas size is 64 by 64 pixels, but he only takes up maybe 12 by 24, there could be a reason you set it at 64 by 64. So you can tell GameMaker not to crop it, and it'll keep each one of your sprites at 64 by 64 on this texture page. Or really, it'll keep it at any size that you've originally chosen. The next section says texture border width, and it has a dropdown. This function will be used when scaling is enabled. The reason for this is when your sprites or, or your background images are scaled up, sometimes this can cause gaps or seams where one background image or one sprite meets another. To fix this problem, GameMaker will do some sort of an overlap or pixel doubling with all of the edges of the sprites on this particular texture page. And you can set how many pixels will be overlapped. The next section down is Parent. If you have all of your settings set up, like texture group not scaled and no cropping, and then you have a bunch of other texture groups, and you want them to have the same settings, you can just make them children of that one particular texture group, and it'll adopt all the settings. That's what this parent dropdown is used for. Below this, we have targets texture group is valid for. You may have different settings and different texture groups depending on which platform you're going to output your game for, specifically PC versus mobile. In that case, you may have a different way of setting up your levels or main menus on PC compared to how you would set up the texture groups for your main menus and levels for Android or iOS. This is your chance to do that. You can have a texture group set up for Windows, then duplicate it, change the options to it, or even change the sprites that are on that particular texture page, and then use these checkboxes to show which target the texture group is valid for. The next tab is Project Info. This tab is relatively simple compared to what we've just gone through. It's just a way of keeping track of your project. There's a field for entering the author of the game. There's a field for your version number. There's a section that shows the last changed date and time. And then there's some information. This is just a section for you to write whatever you want to write, especially if you're working on the game with many people. You can put in some information that says, okay, this level is done, or still working on this code, or whatever you need to do, this is just personal information for you while you're working on your game. The next tab is Windows, and inside there are actually three more tabs, General, Graphics, and Installer. In the Windows General tab, we have a display name. This is a great place to put the name of your game, as it will be displayed on the top bar of the window when your game is playing. Then you have a spot for version information. You can enter in your own version code. You can enter in your company's name, the product, the copyright, and the description. These all get packaged into the EXE when you compile your game. On the right side, we have a splash screen. This is the screen that shows while your game is loading up before it reaches the first room. 
Depending on the version of GameMaker you have, you may be stuck with the Made with GameMaker Studio splash screen, or you may be able to update it and add your own splash screen. At the bottom we have a section just called Options. The first part is a checkbox for Display the Cursor. If this is checked, the mouse cursor will be displayed inside the boundaries of the window for the game that's being run. If not, then the cursor will not be shown. Sometimes the game you've made only uses the keyboard or a gamepad and you don't want the cursor getting in the way. Here you can just turn off display of the cursor and then the player won't think that the cursor is a valid method of interacting with your game. Below that we have game icon. This requires you to use a .ico file. This is the icon that will be displayed on the computer of the person who has your game. It'll come up in their folders or on their desktop or wherever. The section below that is saved at a location. This is your opportunity to pick a location, really you only have two options, where your game data will be saved on the user's computer, either their local app data and then your game name, or just app data and the game name. It's up to you if you want to change this or just leave it as is. The next tab below general is graphics. I find this to be a very important tab and should always come here whenever you're setting up your game. In the options section, the first checkbox is start in full screen mode. It does what it sounds like it does. If you check it, your game will start up in full screen on the user's computer. And if not, it'll start in a windowed mode at whatever resolution you've set it to, whatever port on screen. The next one is interpolate colors between pixels. When graphics are scaled to different resolutions, the image may not look pixel perfect, and the computer has to kind of interpret and blend pixels together as they stretch and shrink. Unfortunately, what that means is your graphics may appear blurry if you check this, especially if you're doing pixel art, because it's already pixel perfect. If your game is pixel art, you can uncheck this box, and then you can scale your game to any size and it should look fine. However, if your game is very nicely blended and has a lot of gradients to the graphics, you might want to have this turned on because it'll blend things a little better as people change the resolution of the game. The next checkbox is Forced Software Vertex Processing. If you check this, the computer of the user playing the game will use only the CPU. It will not use the GPU. This may be necessary for older computers. Most of the time, you can leave it unchecked. The next checkbox is Use Synchronization to Avoid Tearing. This is more commonly known as VSync. If you find that your game looks torn as the frames are being generated as you're playing the game, what I mean is it'll look like there's a horizontal line breaking the screen every once in a while and your pixels will look shifted at that line. It means that the refresh rate of the monitor versus maybe the frame rate or even room speed are not syncing up properly and it's causing a split in between. If that's a problem, and it usually is more of a problem with full screen than windowed, you can turn this on and your game will automatically be compiled with vSync turned on. There are ways to manipulate vSync within GML code, and I'll show you that later. The next checkbox is allow the player to resize the game window. If this is checked, the player can use his cursor to grab any of the borders of the window and stretch it out to any size he wishes. Now, of course, you may not want that for your game, in which case you should have this not checked, but if for some reason, if you want your players to be able to change the window size, you can turn this on. And below that, there's a section called Scaling, and you have two radio buttons, which is Keep Aspect Ratio and Full Scale. No matter how the player manipulates the size of the window, full screen, or changes the size of the actual game window, Keep Aspect Ratio will make sure that your game still looks one-to-one -one in scale. What that means is that if a player stretches the size of the window outside of the scale of your game, he'll just get blackness beyond that. However, if you check full scale, your image will always try to fill the window. This may cause stretching of your image and may not be what you want. The very last checkbox is allow switching to full screen. If this is checked, the player can use alt enter to go from window mode to full screen mode. Once again, if you have something against full screen, you can turn this off and the player will not be allowed to turn your windowed game into a full screen game. On the right side, we have a section for texture pages. Here we have a drop down of how big you want your texture pages to be. Although the default is 2048 by 2048, you can make it bigger or smaller. The problem is making it bigger means that your texture pages may become less compatible. I suggest using 2048 
as your maximum size. Going smaller is actually a great idea for mobile devices as the screen is smaller and your graphics may end up being smaller as well. In fact, most mobile devices require you to have smaller texture pages anyway. But for Windows and for most other devices, 2048 by 2048 is a perfectly suitable texture page size. Then you get to click on Preview. If you do, GameMaker will generate your texture pages for you. You'll be taken to an Explorer window wherever your texture pages are saved for this particular game. Then you can double click on them and check them out for yourself. And now you know what each one of your texture pages looks like and where it's saved on your computer. The third and final tab is Installer. GameMaker does allow you to compile your executable as a standalone executable. But it may be better, especially if you have a lot of auxiliary files that go along with your executable, to have it compiled as an installation file. And inside the Installer tab, there's a section for graphics. The first section is called Finished. This is a 164 by 314 bitmap formatted file. It must be a bitmap. And this is an image that will appear on the Finished page for the installer when the installer finishes. The header is similar. It's 150 by 57 and still needs to be a bitmap file. And this is the graphic that will appear when the installer is running, actually installing the game. On the right side, we have two scripts. We have Installer NSI script and License Agreement. If you have your own license agreement, you can edit it here, but GameMaker also supplies a default one, just for GameMaker Studio itself. And the button above License Agreement is for editing the Installer NSI script. This is the script that's used to create the installer. It's similar to something like Install Shield. It's just the script that'll run to install your game. And if for some reason you need to go really in depth onto how your game is installed, you can change the script here. Although the default is totally fine, you can just leave it as is. The rest of the tabs have to do mostly with source control and different output modules, which I don't want to go over quite yet. I will have separate playlists specific to mobile devices and source control. So for now, I just hope you understand that global game settings are a very important way to set up how your game is actually executed or even compiled and installed. <laughs>